of sexual defilement? Is it ghusl because the female her menses has ended? Or brother Ahmed, he's taking a ghusl because it's the day of Friday? Or brother Salman, taking a ghusl because it's the day of Eid? So two aspects with regards to intention. Number one, the matter of ikhlas, this act of worship must be for Allah's sake. And number two, to know exactly what act of worship is this? For what reason are you? Are you doing it? Ya Abdullah, Ya Amat Allah, you might have a brother enters the masjid. The Imam might be in Ruku and the brother stands and he says, I am praying this four rakahs of salah because I want to face towards the Qibla and I'm following this Imam and it's Zuhar Salah and Fard Salah. The Imam's already maybe now gone into his sajda. Then the brother says, Allahu Akbar. Then he thinks to himself, I think I missed out four rakahs. So he starts again, Inni nawaitu an usalli and Allahu Akbar. The Imam finished his second sajda and the brothers missed out. Then the brothers got wiswas of shaitan, whispers of shaitan. He thinks to himself, maybe I did not mention that it's Zuhr salah. So again, Allahu Akbar and he mentions that this is for Zuhr salah. Subhanallah. The Imam might finish a rak'ah, two units of the prayer and this brother has not yet begun his prayer. Why? Because of the whispers of shaitan. Why? Because brother, this was something that the Prophet ﷺ did not do, did not speak about, did not talk about. They would begin their salah with what? With Allahu Akbar. Not with, oh Allah, I'm praying such and such. They would begin Allahu Akbar. Prophet ﷺ mentions in the hadith, which has some weakness in it, wherein it states that tahrimuha at takbir. Everything becomes haram when you say Allahu Akbar. وَتَحْلِيلُهَا التسليم. And everything becomes halal when you say Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullah. Drinking water, running around, doing a workout, jogging. All of this is haram, not allowed while you are in salah. Because everything becomes haram with Allahu Akbar and everything becomes halal with Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullah. Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam did not say at the beginning of your salah, state, Oh Allah, I'm praying this and this and I'm doing four rakahs and two rakahs and zuhr and asr or whatever it might be. The intention, the place for it is in your heart and not on your tongue. Ibn Taymiyyah rahimahullah states, The one who verbalizes his intention, he's got a deficiency in his aql and deficiency in his religion. Deficiency in his aql because at the beginning when he wants to go to work, he does not say, Oh Allah, I'm going to work. When he, for example, puts on Peace TV, he does not say, Oh Allah, I'm now putting on Peace TV. When, for example, he goes on the internet, he does not say, Oh Allah, I'm now browsing the internet. So why don't you say it for all of that? But you want to say it for salah, and you want to say it for siyam, etc. And you want to say it for purification. It does not make sense. And the other matter, it's the deficiency in your religion because Sahaba Tabi'een, Prophet ﷺ did not speak about it. Allah did not talk about it in the Noble Qur'an. Place of intention is in your heart, insha'Allah. And you all know this mas'ala, subhanAllah. Sometimes a brother, he comes into the masjid and he says, Oh Allah, I'm praying four rakahs of Salatul Zuhr and then facing the Kaaba and iqtidayt to bihad al-imam and all of this here. And he says, Allahu Akbar. After Salah, he thinks to himself, Oh, you know what? I've made a mistake. This was Asr Salah, but I said Zuhr Salah. But I knew in my heart, wallahi, that it was Asr al-Salah. So he comes to the Mawlana, he comes to the Shaykh, and he says, Oh Mawlana, oh Shaykh, I've got a big problem. What's your problem, brother? He says, wallahi, in my heart, I knew that it was Asr al-Salah. But on my tongue, by mistake, I said it was Zuhr al-Salah. What would the Imam say? What would the Shaykh say? They would say to him, brother, don't worry about it. Whatever you had in your heart, that was most important. That overrides whatever you said on your tongue. So then subhanAllah, think about it brothers and sisters. If at the end of the day, what's in my heart overrides what's on my tongue, then there's no need to say anything on the tongue at all. So brothers and sisters, you begin your salah with Allahu Akbar. And with regards to wudu, there's no need to say, Oh Allah, I'm now making wudu, etc, etc, to lift my state of impurification, my state of defilement, whatever it might be. There's no need for all of this. You just say Bismillah and you begin your wudu. Walhamdulillah.
Intention is to be conscious of what you are doing. If you wake up in the morning, five o'clock, and you are taking wudu in your bathroom, and someone phones and they ask you, brother, what are you doing? What would you say? You would say, I'm taking wudu. So you know exactly what you are doing. Why are you taking wudu five o'clock in the morning, brother? He would say, for Salatul Fajr. So as long as you know what you are doing, that is your intention, consciousness, walhamdulillah. We move on, bi'ithnillahi ta'ala. That was the letter I. Now we move on to the letter J. And J is for what? J is for the state of Janaba. J is for Janaba. So the individual is in a state of sexual defilement, either due to the fact that he had a wet dream nocturnal emission, and on the side, that's a sign that the individual is now baligh. That's a sign that someone is now mature, right? That the individual is now mature. He's reached the age of puberty now that he or she has had a nocturnal emission, a wet dream. There are other signs, well, alhamdulillah, now this is only one of those signs. And probably this is the most important, most important sign. The other signs are, for example, with regards to the male, that he has hair around the privates. Also with regards to the male and the female, once they reach the age of, the age of 15. For the female, now that she menstruates, that's a sign that she's baligh. Or for example, male or female, if they've had a nocturnal emission, they're in a state of janaba, it's also a sign that they are now baligh. They are now mature. Salah is an obligation upon them. Siyam is an obligation upon them. And all of those matters, walhamdulillah. So with regards to janaba, the individual needs to take a complete ghusl. Ahmed had a wet dream. He needs to take a complete ghusl before Salatul Fajr, for example. Ahmed and his wife Sumeya, they had complete intimacy with one another. Then both of them require taking a ghusl. And we've already discussed the masail pertaining to ghusl. Alhamdulillah, we went through it step by step. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala grant us tawfiq. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala grant us ilm and nafi'. Ya Abdullah, Ya Amat Allah, that was the letter J. Once we return after a short break, insha'Allah, we will discuss the letter K. And K comes for what? K stands for what? K stands for Khamar, J. K stands for Khamar. K H A M R, Khamar. What is Khamar? Khamar is alcohol. Khamar is an intoxicant. We will discuss khamar, whether it's pure, whether it's not pure, the ahkam related to that. And K is also for, K is also for a kiss. So what happens if husband and wife exchange kisses? Is this something which nullifies their wudu? We will discuss bi'ithnillahi ta'ala after a short break. Hayyakumullah, assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. أشهد أن لا إله إلا الله أشهد أشهد أن محمد رسول الله. 
Discussion, 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 debate, 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 rebuttal, rebuttal, rebuttal conclusion, conclusion, conclusion. Eliminate misconceptions about religion. Get enlightened. Witness Dr. Zakir Naik in a battle of words in Crossfire every Saturday at 8.30 p.m. and repeat telecast at 12.30 p.m. UK on Peace TV. p.m. and repeat telecast at 10.30 a.m. UK on Peace TV. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Ahlan wa sahlan wa marhaban bikum. We continue bi-idhnillahi ta'ala our series, the A to Z series, our episode dealing with the A to Z of purification. Alhamdulillah, before that break, we discussed I, I for impurities, I for intention, J was for, J was for Janaba, state of Janaba. If someone had a wet dream, nocturnal mission, or there was full intimacy between husband and wife, one requires taking a fresh ghusl, complete ghusl, alhamdulillah. Then we moved on to the letter, we moved on to the letter K. And now K stands for what, brothers and sisters? K is for khamar. Khamar, alcohol. Allah states in the Noble Quran, إِنَّمَا الْخَمْرُ وَالْمَيْسِرُ وَالْأَنْصَابِ وَالْأَزْلَامْ رِدْسْ مِنْ عَمَلِ الشَّيْطَانِ That verily this khamar and this gambling etc. it is ridz, it is filthy 
and it is from the acts of the devil, it is from the acts of shaitan. Ya Abdullah, Ya Amat Allah, majority of the scholars of the opinion that alcohol is something which is najis. Why? Because Allah said in the Quran, it is ritz, it is something which is filthy, and they define the word ritz as something which is najis. And so, Majority of the scholars state that alcohol is najis, walhamdulillah. Minority group of scholars of the opinion, Rabi'atul Ra'i, teacher of Imam Malik and others, they were of the opinion that alcohol is haram, but it's not najis. Alcohol is haram, but not najis. And this is also the opinion of many a contemporary scholar. It's also the opinion of the Islamic Medical Association. When they discuss the mas'ala of usage of alcohol as swabs, when someone has an injury, someone has a wound, they spoke about it in certain treatments, certain creams. They discuss this mas'ala at length and their final resolution was the fact that alcohol is something which is haram, but it's not najis. Why did they say it's not najis? When Allah called it ritz in the Noble Quran, they said number one, the word ritz does not necessarily mean najis. It could just mean something filthy. And not everything filthy is najis. You might have some mucus on your garment. Suleiman might have some mucus on his garment. He might have some grease on his garment. The pot of beans has fallen onto his clothes. The garbage bin fell onto his garment. So there's a lot of dirt. There's a lot of filth there, but it's not najis. Najis, urine. Najis, feces. Najis, the saliva of the dog. So with regards to Khamar, these scholars stated that alcohol is something haram but not najis. The proofs were, number one, the basic default rule that everything is pure until proven otherwise. That's one super important proof. Number two, they said that when the prohibition of alcohol came down, the people of Medina, they went out on the streets and they poured all of their alcohol. So these scholars said, had alcohol been najis, the Sahaba would not have poured their alcohol drinks out on the street because you're going to mess the street, people are going to walk there, their clothes are going to get dirty. So they said, it shows that alcohol is not najis. Had it been najis, they would not have thrown it and dumped it there on the street. The third proof that these scholars used, the fact that alcohol, Allah mentioned in the Noble Quran that it is ritz, Allah also mentioned other items like gambling and the Azlam. These matters are also ritz. And everyone agrees that the gambling machine is not najis. You touch the gambling machine, you don't need to go and wash your hands. Although Allah called it ritz in the Quran. So these minority scholars, they said to the majority, if you want to apply the word ritz on alcohol, you have to apply it on all the other matters mentioned in the verse. And if you do not apply it on them, then do not apply it on alcohol. So those were some of their proofs. Majority counted and they said another proof we have. For example, Allah said for the people of paradise, we will give them a sharaban tahura, a drink which is pure. So they said, well, if the drink in Jannah is pure, then the drink of this world should be impure. The minority group of scholars said, no, that's not necessarily the case because Allah used the word sharab and sharab is general any type of drink. If you want to use this verse generally, then you're going to have a problem. How? Because then Coca-Cola would be najis. Orange juice would be najis. Water would also be najis. Because all the drinks of this world will then turn into najis. Because the drinks of paradise are pure. So the converse, everything in this world should be najis. And nobody saves that. So Ya Abdullah, Ya Amat Allah, two groups of scholars, majority stating alcohol being najis, and minority stating that it is pure but haram to consume. Fruits of this difference would be that if, for example, there was some alcohol, you were not drinking, but somehow some alcohol fell onto your garment, according to majority of the scholars, you need to wash it off. Why? Because it's najis. According to minority group of scholars, if you prayed your salah without washing it off, your salah would be valid because according to them, it's not najis. And the opinion that it's not najis is definitely a very strong opinion. Walhamdulillah. Ya Abdullah, Ya Amat Allah, K is also for, K is also for a kiss. So the husband and wife, they exchange some kisses. 
and half an hour later he goes to the masjid and he thinks to himself do i need to take a wudu because i've kissed my wife is it fine kissing her would this have an effect on my wudu we say to brother ahmed that inshallah your wudu is fine you do not require taking a fresh wudu kissing your wife touching your wife all of this does not nullify the wudu skin on skin contact does not nullify wudu skin on skin contact with desire does not break wudu even kissing the wife with desire or without desire does not nullify the wudu why why do they say this why is this inshallah the strongest opinion because number one the basic principle that once i have wudu then my wudu is intact it is fine the one who says that my wudu is broken he has to prove that my wudu is broken so the onus of proof is upon those ulama who state that touching the wife breaks wudu or those who state that kissing the wife etc breaks wudu they must bring the proof it's not our job to prove that it does not but rather it is their job to prove that this breaks wudu so that was the letter k brothers and sisters we dealt with khamar and we also dealt with kissing between the spouses and that is fine inshallah it's not something which nullifies the wudu and obviously we are talking about when the husband kisses the wife we're talking about that person who it is allowed for you to kiss the father kissing for example his kids his little kids no issue with that inshallah as for with somebody who is a stranger to you then that is haram the letter l brothers and sisters the letter l l for what l for the limbs l for our limbs we wash our limbs in wudu what are the four limbs mentioned in the noble quran the face is mentioned in the quran the limb of the arm mentioned in the noble quran making the mass of the head mentioned in the noble quran washing of the feet mentioned in the noble quran these four limbs mentioned in the noble quran walhamdulillah ya abdullah ya amatullah they are part of the furud they are part of the fard actions or the fard limbs which have to be washed you have to wash them walhamdulillah with regards to these limbs do we find in the noble quran any mention of the nostrils or gargling of the mouth no it's not mentioned there explicitly although those scholars who state that it is a fard they would argue that within the definition of the face is found the gargling of the mouth and cleansing of the nostrils but as for mention of it explicitly then that is not there so these four limbs must be washed in wudu walhamdulillah and the last letter for this episode inshallah and that's the letter m m is for m is for the miswak yes m is for the miswak walhamdulillah the prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam he states لولا ان اشق على امتي لامرتهم بالسواك عند كل صلاه some narrations عند كل وضوء سبحان الله the prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam states that had it not been difficult upon my ummah i would have ordered them to use the miswak at the time of every salah another narration i would have ordered them to use the miswak at the time of every wudu so important it was to the prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam he wanted to make it an obligation brothers and sisters this teaches us the importance of having a good breath it teaches us the importance of taking care with regards to oral hygiene with regards to that which is within the mouth with regards to brushing of the teeth brothers and sisters prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam would enter his home he would use the miswak prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam even on his death bed he sees abdur rahman the brother of aisha radhiyallahu ta'ala anha enter and in her brother's hand was the miswak prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam looks at it he cannot even ask i want to use the miswak because of the sakarat at that time the wife she knows her husband she takes it aisha and then she moistens it on the other side and she puts it in the mouth of the prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam even at that time prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam is worried with regards to his dental hygiene so m for the miswak make sure you use the miswak insha allah make sure that you gargle your mouth make sure that you cleanse your mouth and we have some narrations from some of the sahaba if they did not have a miswak then they used the finger to cleanse the mouth and that would suffice insha allah hayyakumullah 
And unfortunately, we come to the end of another episode, brothers and sisters. I thank you all. Jazakumullahu khairan. Your brother in Islam, Bilal Ismail, all the way from South Africa. Hayakumullah. Remember, if your knowledge is above average, your ibadah, akhlaq, character is also supposed to be above average. Hada wa sallallahu wa sallam wa baraka ala amdihi wa rasulihi nabina Muhammad wa ala alihi wa sahbihi ajma'in. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Allah, Allah, you are my Lord. I bow to you. Allah, Allah, you are my Lord. I bow to you. Allah, oh my Allah.